welcome to the virtual walking festival edition of the Telusk Forum, an online video programme for everyone living in the Crick Howell area. The festival was planned for this week and would have been in full swing. Sadly, Covid restrictions have prevented it happening this year. So we thought we could provide a flavour of it on the Telusk Forum. You may wonder why we're wearing these colourful wooden hats. These were gifts for those who've led walks in the festival in the past few years. I wear mine with a great sense of pride. I wear mine because it's his spare one. In this programme, Ed Walker reviews a book that the book club read, a story of an epic journey of tragedy and hope of refugees travelling from Syria to Britain. I interview three people who are involved in leading walks in the area. First of all, David Thomas and Bill Chase, who are involved in the festival, and Nick Groombridge from the Park Society. Helen brings us a poem on a walking theme. Vaughan entertains us on the keyboard with a background of photographs of a local walk well known to most of us. And finally, Julian reflects on the importance of special places and looks forward in the season of Lent towards the special destination of Easter. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the programme. Program. Hello, my name's Ed Walker, and as a member of the Church Book Club, I've been asked to review The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Leftari. This one gets a double thumbs up. It's about a journey from a war-torn country, a journey through extreme grief and loss, it's a journey of rediscovered love to a destination of hope for a place of security and new life. The author is desperate for us to rediscover our sight, to see through the story based closely on the experience of meeting people escaping Afghanistan and Syria, that these sorts of people, asylum seekers, are actually us if we are in the same circumstances they're in. The story is well written. You soon catch on to the writing style of moving from one place to another as thoughts about the same thing come to the mind of the main character. There are moving accounts of some horrific incidents and yet little glimpses of humour and touches of kindness. We can easily identify with the sheer frustration of bureaucracy and the process known to us all of registering with a new doctor's practice, guarded as it was by a kind but zealous receptionist. Knowing the background and trauma of the couple, we are put in the place of an interviewee at an immigration interview. The seemingly harsh questioning and request to go over again the extremely traumatic happenings appears so unnecessary, even plain cruel. There are questions too that seem ridiculous, so much so that they appear designed to be deliberately anger-provoking. Yet the couple pull through. Their shattered relationship changes and hope and new love grows. There is a freshness about this book. It's very well written, and you warm to the family's plight. There are many themes interwoven on which one can ponder. I wonder about the significance of bees in the story, a creature we don't really notice, yet agriculture depends upon pollinators. There may be a parallel with the asylum seekers. They are grateful to take on unnoticed jobs which turn out to be so important the sorts of jobs that it takes a pandemic to show the significance of. But why read this book as part of a church book club? Well, there's the human story written here. A family living well, whose lives are shattered by the evil of civil war, stoked by outside powers. Evil shown in the actions of other human beings in Syria and on the journey exploitation of their vulnerability as they try to escape to safety is explored. Yet kindness shown by others and despite the selfish organisation of human society and its nation states, a begrudging willingness to try to help genuine refugees. This journey shows up the conflict between good and evil in our lives on so many levels. In the book there is repeated mention of a key, a symbol of hope and security. And, extreme as this life journey is, we are all on a journey through life. Is there a destination? Do we have a key? 
And is it the right one? Well, it's great to have David Thomas and Nick Groombridge here with us on the program this week. We're focusing on the walking festival and uh, David has been a leader of the team delivering the walking festival for a number of years. And Nick's involved on the walk side for the Park Society who play a very active role in promoting walks in this local area. So, so welcome to both of you. Hi, Hi. nice to be here. We, we look to the festival as being perhaps the kickstart to the season of festivals in Crickhowl. And we perhaps take it for granted today that the walking festival is there. And it's now a very much an established feature of Crickhowl's offer for events. But uh, David, you know better than anybody else, how, how did the festival uh, come about in the first place? Well, it goes back to, well, I think, 2007, uh, when we were initially setting up uh, Crick, the resource centre, and um, we had a list of things that we wanted to do for the community. And one was to support the tourism industry and the traders. So we got a group of them together in the conference room in Crick and sort of threw around a number of ideas and asked them what it was that the town needed from a, a tourism point of view. And they said, well, we're at very busy usual times of Easter, summer, Christmas, half terms, but the shoulders at either end are empty. And if we could extend the season in some way, then that would be great. So I stupidly said, well, how about doing a walking festival? And they said, what a good idea. Why don't you organize it? <laughs> <laughs> that's how it started literally um, and that's why also why we chose such a stupid time of year because um, we decided that we needed a hook to hang it on and St David's Day was a good hook to hang it on which meant we had to start around the beginning of March end of February in fact the very first one um, the first of March fell on a Saturday it was 2008 and so we were able to advertise it as because we were a bit worried about it then whether it would work as a St David's Day walking weekend mm. with a number of uh, walks during the week afterwards mm. and it proved successful so it just became the whole the whole week so that's where we started it's a, a thing which is aimed at uh, bringing people here at a time when normally B&Bs would have been closed great uh, and Nick, you've been running walks in the Brecon Beacons for some time through the Park Society. How did you see uh, the walking festival and the, and the walk of the Park Society fitting together? Is it something that's compatible? Oh, oh, we're, we're, we're dreadful rivals. Uh, it's you know, daggers at dawn. Uh, no, obviously quite a few of us overlap. Um, I've walked on festival walks uh, and I was hoping to be a back marker uh, assistant this year uh, and in, in no doubt in, in due course to even lead some of my own um, and many of our members uh, lead walks with uh, the walking festival so there's a considerable and, and very friendly uh, overlap <laughs> but right. as a walks all as a walks as a walks organizer I do sometimes look to see what the festival is up to for our program because we continue our program through that time. So I try to see what we're up against, as it were. Can I, can I come in here? Because yes, yes, uh, going back again to the very beginning of it, um, the only walk leaders I knew were the Park Society walk leaders. That was the group that we knew. So um, because we needed to get, I think we had about 30 walks in the week that first uh, first time. We're, we're now over 80, 80 to 90 walks in the week. Um, because we needed a group of walk leaders, we actually started for the first probably five years uh, in partnership with the Park Society. Um, and we had a, an arrangement whereby Park Society members who normally walk on Park Society walks for free could walk on walking festival walks for free. 
Um, so the Park Society was very much instrumental in setting up the and helping set up the festival in the first place. As time has gone on, we've got a sufficient group of um, walk leaders ourselves. We've got I've got 120 walk leaders on my books. Um, uh, uh, some mm -hmm. of those obviously overlap, as Nick says, with the uh, Park Society. So we don't need we don't sort of. Uh, need the crutch of the Park Society quite as much as we did, but we still get a lot of support. Okay, great. Um, David, what, what gives you most satisfaction in running the festival? Uh, and what have been the greatest challenges over the years? Anything particular? Um, I guess the greatest satisfaction is, is the repeat people. You know, pe people coming, not repeat people, people coming back repeatedly and saying, um, towards the end of the festival, like, when's next year's? Uh, I need to book my accommodation now because accommodation is scarce. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the fact, the other thing that's great is some, you know, we're doing it at a silly time of year, so the weather can be challenging, let's say. And people are going out in conditions and in situations where they would normally look out of their bedroom window in the morning and say, looks a bit wet and windy, cold, nasty, I'm staying in bed. But because they've paid their £7.50 or whatever for a walk, they go and do it. And they're challenged. And they get back safely. And they walk into cricks, soaking wet or freezing cold, with a great beam on their faces saying, I did it, I did it, I nearly got blown over, I got soaking wet, I fell in a bog, it's great. Right. And that's a real, real buzz, that is. Right. Um, I, can I ask both of you, do, do you, you've led hundreds of walks between you over the, the past few years, but is there a favourite place or a special destination that you have that you could perhaps just share with us? Um, yeah, I think probably my favourite walk, it's a fairly easy walk, actually, is, is one we call a Bryn with a view. Um, the Bryn is one of the lower mountains on the sort of um, northeastern side of the beacons. Um, and you start off at Talibont Reservoir and then you pick up something called the Usk Valley Walk um, and go round the, the hill and then up onto the top. And what's nice about it is the, the views from there are fantastic. You're looking straight across at the whole escarpment of the Black Mountains. And behind you, you've got these huge peaks of the of the beacons, um, and yet you haven't gone very high, mm. and and it's a it's an easy walk, but it's really enjoyable. I think that's probably my favourite walk. And the great thing is, you never see anyone. Well, I'm very lucky. I can see the Bryn from my house, uh, and I have a telescope, so I can see you sitting there. Um, <laughs> It's very difficult to know what my favourite is because I'm 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 still feel I'm exploring. But if I look at the walks that I've most often led, and I know that even when I'm not leading it, I find myself reverting to it. Sort of default walk uh, is a walk f literally from Brecon um, through over the top of uh, Cantrev and down to um, Lundrunnock, uh, and then back. And that has some of the same pleasures that David's talking about. It's you go up, but not so much so that you're completely exhausted, uh, but fantastic views all around. So I do particularly uh, like walks where I can say to the, the other walkers, well, you know, I did fix that style myself, or I have <laughs> been part of a, a, a work party um, that, that looks after this path because uh, like several other members of the Park Society, um, I do volunteer with the, the National Park. So um, that, that adds, sort of adds a little bone. It also gives me something to talk about. <laughs> but it's amazing, uh, volunteers come from all over. We, we have people who come from, from Bristol and other parts of England, which does worry me on the sort of green front that <laughs> people are traveling quite so, so far. Um, but, uh, Another part, of, another part of the walking jigsaw, of course, we must mention, is walkers are welcome in Crick Hull. Um, they um, publish a number of um, walking booklets, which are very popular and raise quite a lot of money. Um, 
some of which they use to help support the um, first aid training we have for the walking festival. But, but quite a lot is used for um, supporting the national park in doing some of the work that Nick does. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a jigsaw of Park Society, Walkers are Welcome, and the Walking Festival all contributing to making this a really important walking area now. Looking forward, um, 2022 beckons. Uh, hopefully it'll be uh, an easier year than 2020 or 2021. Um, have you got any ideas as to how you'd like to develop the festival or Nick, uh, your walking in, in the area? I think yeah, spoiler alert. Yes. Um, <laughs> plans is probably too strong a word. We certainly are very strongly in looking into whether we can put together a festival solely for our members um, in, in the summer to sort of get out uh, and about uh, and to sort of celebrate our release, but safely. Yeah, as far as the 2022 uh, walking festival is concerned, I'm in the sort of uh, fallow period at the moment. Um, <laughs> I try not to think about it for a, for a while. Uh, it's uh, we always we always come up with some new ideas though. Um, we've done all sorts of of challenges. Um, we've uh, run all the. Uh, we, we one year we did walks down every every single um, ridge of the Black Mountains on one day which was quite fun there. And we timed the walk so that they should have all arrived back at Crick at the same time. We didn't quite manage it, but uh, that was quite fun. Um, so we'll no doubt come up with something, um, but we start our planning for Ernest in August. And um, until then, I try not to think too hard about it. Great. Well, thank you very much, both of you for joining us today. It's been really, really interesting to hear about both, both sides of the coin, as it were. And um, I'd encourage anyone who hasn't had a taster of walking in a group uh, to do so. And um, we've got two opportunities ahead of us, the programme that the Park Society will be putting out later this year, and then wait eagerly for the latest version of the Walking Festival when it reappears in 2022. So thank you, David, and thank you, Nick. Okay. Um Well, I'd like to welcome Bill Chase onto the Telusk Forum this week. Bill is a resident of Crick Hall and has for several years supported the Walkers a Welcome initiative and the walking festival team. He's led many local walks, including family walks up Table Mountain, after dark walks using head torches and navigation training courses. Do you think that walking provides benefits in addition to making us more physically fit? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, I think HF um, actually attracts a lot of single people, uh, single for all sorts of reasons, um, and particularly women who may be nervous about going on holiday uh, on, on their own. Um, but um, being with a group of like-minded people I think um, uh, it, it, it works really well. Um, actually, you know, on a walk, you don't have to walk and chatter with, with other people if you don't want to, and people understand that. Uh, a group of people, you may want to be on your own and just, uh, just adjust your pace and so you're within sight of people, but um, uh, enjoy the, the peace um, and the, the experience but within um, the comfort of being, being led so that uh, you don't have to worry about the navigation or uh, the last bus home or something. Oh, that's great. Well, I know that um, a lot of us may resist um, going on an organized holiday or even perhaps on, on a walk out from Crick Hall in the walking festival because maybe we feel that there's a challenge of taking on a strenuous walk, which we'll find quite difficult, or, or maybe it's meeting up with new people that we find difficult and we, we're not sure how well we'll get on with them. Have, have you got anything to say about that? 
Yeah, I, I, first of all, on the, um, the physical challenge, um, walks are uh, usually graded and um, you have to slot in your what you think you can do um, against the, the grade of the walk. And uh, that's certainly true in the, the holidays I lead. They're, they're different grades of walk. And uh, if you're going to go up um, a, a very high alp, for example, and you've never done it before, well, then perhaps you might like to uh, choose a walk that stays in the valleys. And they can be just as, uh, uh, just as exciting and um, nourishing in, in a way than uh, as going flogging up a mountain, getting to the top and coming down again. Um, so that's the physical side. The social side of walking with people, um, I, I think it has uh, all sorts of all sorts of benefits. Um, I've I've met people who've been nervous about walking in a group, um, but um, in a walk all day long that might be, for example, five or six hours walking at a gentle pace. Uh, and uh, with with stops for for refreshment, for example, and uh, picnic lunch, um, there's plenty of opportunity to to chatter to people um, if you want to or not, um, and uh, you can just get the measure of people. Um, and uh, you you can engage with them um, if if you want to. Uh, um, yeah, I think it, it can be very beneficial. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've certainly found it surprising that on a walk, you can often relax with people in a way that you'd find much more difficult in a different context. And people, um, if you've got maybe 20 people on a walk, you end up speaking to nearly all of them after a couple of hours on the walk. And it's, uh, it's very refreshing because there are so many different people there. Yes, that's, that's true. Yeah. I mean, pe people, it's surprising how um, some people always like to walk at the front of the group and some people always like to, to walk at the back and uh, others in the middle. Um, yeah, so if you, if you um, are nervous about the pace, then I think it's, that's the job of the walk leader to, to be aware of uh, people's uh, people struggling, for example, up hills, mm. then um, you can stop the ones in, in front who are, uh, want to be uh, run up and you know be mountain hares, mm. and get them to to uh, stop and enjoy the view, for example, or take a photo and let the others uh, catch up. Well, I think we're all uh, a little bit disappointed this year because the walking festival isn't taking place in Krikal um, and we would obviously encourage you all to join us next year when the program comes out but in the meantime uh, Bill have you got any suggestions if anybody wanted to start um, by going on perhaps a walking holiday which will be new for quite a lot of us it would certainly be new for me to do that and any suggestions on where you might start? Oh, I think I'd start in, in uh, the UK because, well, you can't go abroad this year anyway, probably, or not at the moment. Um, start uh, in an area that perhaps you are familiar with um, and um, maybe go on a, a three-day um, break or a four-day break rather than commit yourself to a whole week. Okay, thank you. Well, finally, uh, Bill, is there any special place or special walk that means a lot to you? Uh, and have you got reasons for why it is? Oh, gosh, I mean, there's, there's so many lovely places I've, I've been to um, around Europe and around the world and, and in Britain. Um, I think uh, coastal walks are always, um, always good fun. Um, I love Scotland because the air is so fresh. It doesn't always rain in Scotland. Um, uh, it, it can be can be lovely, but but living where we are here in the Beacons, the Black Mountains, uh, right on our doorstep, where we've got fantastic walks, um, 
where you you can be alone and not see a soul if you want to uh, or or walk with a group uh, but around here in the black mountains you can always get solace if you want to um, and uh, you know, in, in relative, relative safety. It's not like North Wales where you're, there are rocks and you can fall off something. There's very few places you can fall off in, in, in the Brecon Beacons. <laughs> well, the number of times the uh, mountain rescue go out, one might, might think it was otherwise, but there we are. Yes, well, people are unprepared. Yes, yes, indeed. So I think that's another message that we perhaps should be putting over that uh, if you do go out walking, you need to make sure you've got the right clothing and footwear for the occasion. And obviously the weather can change very quickly, can't it? And we need to be prepared in whatever way to have a decent compass and a map and to charge up your mobile phone before you leave your home, I think is another tip really for everybody. Yes, that's always sound. Yeah, good idea. Mm, yeah. Great. Well, thank you ever so much, Bill. It's been a real pleasure to have you on the programme. And uh, hopefully we'll all be out walking very soon. And uh, do... This poem is called Walk the Ways. Walk the ways, past docks and nettles, crazy grasses after rain. Walk the ways, over stiles, through mud and puddles, as you breathe the blue sky in. Listen to the seeds popping in the heat, to insects in the hawthorn hedge, dense with summer. Hear the distant grind of tractors, the high kites mewing on the wind. On up to the common, woven with yellow rattle, marsh orchid, sweet water mint, and in the middle, a cool stream for the dog to take a drink. Treading on memories, on paths where girls dance and laughed, hair crowned with sticky bud, necks with daisies wound round and round, far too warm in hobnailed boots, a giddy time the summer, then as now. On up to Tom's field, in time to see the foal's first breaths, its mother's soft nose caress, pure loveliness. Walk the ways, keep the timeless lines for those to come, yet to find the place to call their own, to plant their feet, to sing their song. Do you have a special place? Somewhere which has a special significance for you? Perhaps it's where you went on holiday as a child or on a school outing. Maybe your first trip abroad or somewhere in your grandparents' home. 
everyone has somewhere different. My special place is a village called Hemingford Grey. Where's that, you may say? Well, it's in the east of England, and it's the place that I first got to know my future wife, Alison, when we went down the river on a boat and had a lovely afternoon together. We've been back several times over the years because of the special memories from the past. I'd like you to think about your special place. Maybe it's so local that you can walk there, or possibly it's too far away for that and you need to get on your bike or perhaps take the car like we do when we visit Hemingford Grey. Or it may be so far away in the world that you'll need to fly. Maybe somewhere you lived before you came and came to Crick Hell, or you had an exotic wedding and you celebrate that. We all play back the memories that special places have for us. Previous generations took pilgrimage walks that cover great distances to go somewhere special, a shrine or a holy place. And most of us will have heard of the Camino walk to Santiago in northern Spain, and you may have even walked it yourself. We've been reminded in this programme so far about the importance of walking. We may choose to go somewhere we want to, to reach or discover, and get that sense of achievement by doing so. We may walk for our physical well-being. We may lose some weight, which is always a good thing, and become that much fitter. We may walk because of the social interaction. It's therapeutic just to be with other people. Well, how does this relate to us? We've all been in a difficult place this year, largely confined to our homes and gardens. And some people have coped with this better than others. We've been continuously reminded in the media about mental health concerns. And I guess all of us have had some troubles along those lines ourselves. All of us are now longing to get out and experience the freedom to go places, even if it's just to the pub and to the hairdresser. Mm, I think I could do with that myself. Christians often think of life as being a journey. We all experience the ups and the downs, but where are we heading? March is a great time for a walking festival. It's springtime, so the flowers are coming out and the birds are singing in the trees. It's our first chance to get out after all the horrible weather we experience over the winter. And the days are lengthening so we can have longer times exploring the countryside. But it's also the period of Lent. Lent in the Christian calendar is when Jesus set out on a journey to Jerusalem, a special place for the Jews and would become a special place for the Christians too. He knew it would be a difficult journey as it would ultimately lead to his death on Calvary, a hillside just outside the city. We prepare for Easter by remembering that journey to a special place where the ultimate sacrifice was paid for each one of us. We have much to be thankful for. Where we live in the beautiful Usk Valley is our special place. We can still walk in the hills and have a sense of achievement. However bad our circumstances, there is always something to look forward to. And just like the beekeeper, we can escape when times are really hard. But even more importantly at this time, we can walk alongside that story of Jesus in his journey to Jerusalem. And this Easter, we can reflect on the ultimate victory of Jesus and the new life he offers to all who have faith in him. Mm -hmm. 